Welcome to Perch Academy. Welcome to this fourth episode of the Perch Academy. In this episode, we're going to look at one of the most traditional and effective ways to catch big perch, namely shads on jig heads. Soft lures fished on jig heads in different depths, different styles, different techniques. So join us at the lake and we're going to show you some awesome tips. It's been almost 150 years since an angler cast the first ever artificial worm. Since that fateful day, the humble worm has evolved into a whole family tree of soft lures and rigs, all with one common goal, to catch the big one. Nowadays, we're blessed with a huge range of soft lure fishing styles. Texas rig, Carolina rig, drop shot, Ned rigs, Cheb heads. But did you ever stop to wonder where they came from? We're here to help you learn the skills and techniques so you can catch a perch like a pro. Whether it's worms, creature baits, or crayfish, modern perch fishing is a universe of exciting and efficient methods that can help you catch more than ever before. In the prior episodes, we talked about the finesse uh, techniques, Texas, Carolina, uh, drop shot, and net fishing. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite ways of fishing, and that's with jig heads. Jig heads and sheds, paddle tail sheds, and all uh, sorts and styles and types. And we're gonna fish with different styles of jig heads as well. This is a super effective way uh, to search for the perch and to actually provoke them to bite. And we're gonna go through the different methods and the different techniques and how easy this actually is. This is one of the easiest ways to catch perch. There are several different types of jig heads. I'm going to run you through some of the most important ones. You can say, um, the story of the jig head uh, is a little bit difficult to actually track it. And I guess it's because uh, a success has many fathers. So there are several people that claim to be the first ones to have done the jig head. But it's, it's a very, very old invention, you can say. Uh, what's really special about the jig head is actually the J shape of the hook. It kind of gives you this elevation here of the attack point for your fishing line. And that actually gives a very, very good hook set when the fish pick up the soft lures almost uh, immediately um, bites right down on the hook, which is exposed on, on these jig heads. So one of the most common styles of jig heads is the ball jig head, as you can see here. Um, this one is the Savage Gear ball jig head where we have this smart little body holder with a little pro pack uh, system underneath here. So you can basically lock your soft lure in place with a toothpick. Another very uh, effective and good a uh, jig head is these stand-up jig heads or the Erie uh, jig head as they're called. They have a history from Lake Erie uh, in America and this is uh, very, very good for sander fishing or for the walleye as they call them in, uh, in America. So the stand-up jig head actually leaves the jig head kind of standing up from the bottom, uh, but it also gives this cool swimming action. It kind of helps the, the shad to kind of flank on the way down. So these two jig heads are the ones that I use the most for perch fishing. Then you've got football jig heads, you've got wacky jig heads, you've got a whole bunch of different jig heads. But for today's fishing, these are the two types that I'm going to be using. micro jig heads with a little body holder just with a needle and the bob are perfect for small soft lures that where you want a finesse presentation with a relatively slow fall and um, so basically what I do is I measure up just about where I want the jig head to come out and then when I put it on I'm very careful to put the hook right in the center of the body and then I slide it down to where I could see the hook tip should come out, which was right around there for the second leg. And you can see that comes out right in the center. And then in one movement, I just pass it over the bar and let it sit like that. So here you can see that's the absolute perfect way to mount the jig head. The, the soft floor sits nice and straight on the shank of the hook. Also when you see it from the side. So that's how you want to mount the jig head 
on these Microsoft words like that. Okay, brings us to the next one, which is a more bulky paddle tail shad, as you can see. And the cannibal shad here, this is the craft cannibal. I don't want a hook size that is bigger and it should come out right around where the top fin comes out. So if you can measure up here, you can see this one is just around the right size for me to make this perfect. So I prefer to have the hook come out uh, about one third into the software and the total length, and that should be a pretty good matchup. When I choose my weight here, it all depends on how deep I'm fishing and if I'm fishing with a jigging motion, so the lure also swims on the drop, or if I'm fishing linear retrieve, uh, maybe a little bit more pelagic and up in the water. So in this case here, I'm gonna use a five gram jig head for this uh, small lure here. So I would be fishing relatively shallow. And I can see that my hook tip needs to come out right around there. So leave a little mark here where the soft lure should come out. So you can see that's about the way it should be. Then I put it right in the top of the mouth and make sure it's right in the center. And then I just pass it in one nice movement all the way down to that mark and then let it come out right in the mark and push it on to the shank of the hook in one movement like that. And you can see it kind of engulfs the head nice and easy and it sits absolutely perfect in the center. It takes a little practice to get this right, but this is super important that you have the jig heads right on the right side here. So if the soft lure is not sitting straight, the lure doesn't swim and perform correctly. This is pretty much perfect right here. So you can see on this body holder here, there was a little eye. Um, this is what we call the ProPEG system. And you can see when I pop the software on, that eye sits right under the eye of the cannibal shed. And here's a little trick. If you don't want to use the super glue, you can just glue it onto the head. But here with a toothpick, I pop it right through under the eye. And you can see that it sits into that little bulge there the body holder and then I just cut the tip off of my toothpick and I push it right back in so you basically you can't see it it's right there and then I cut it on the other side as well and then I have the perfect solution on how to keep your soft wheel right on the shank of the jig head as you can see here no matter how many tail bites you get that's not going to move so with a simple toothpick and the ProPEG body holder, I've got the absolute perfect presentation. So that's how I would mount a cannibal shad. But then we have a swim jig head. As you can see here, this is an EVG hook and the new slender scoop shad is actually perfect for this kind of hook. Um, so you basically, you pass the jig straight through the chin, let it come out like that holds the bait in place and then you can see on the back there's a slot up there where that swim jig head swim hook just comes out straight through and all you got to do is make sure that you hit the center so it sits nice and firm like that and here you can see you've got a semi-exposed hook that you can push down if you want to be completely weedless and you can see just the slightest touch and you still get the hook to come out so that's how you rig swim jig head on these more slender shads, the slender scoop shed, okay? That brings us to the last ones here that I brought. And uh, I've got two here. I've got an EVG net or stand-up EVG hook like that. Uh, and that's really good for fishing um, worms, like the ribworm uh, or crayfish imitations. So in this case here, if I wanna fish this crayfish here uh, as a stand-up function, drag it over the bottom. This is actually a perfect jig head to choose. So I just pop it on here and then I have my EVG hook come up straight through the back like that. And I can leave that semi exposed as you can imagine. When the perch picks this up, it's almost going to set the hook just like that. Just make sure you hit it right in the center and that you don't have too much beef down here so it sits nice and straight when you see it from the side. And here, the net head, perfect for 
uh, actually bouncing these worms off the bottom, like a ragworm imitation. Uh, this is a good head to choose for that, where you want to simply let it relatively aggressive fall to the bottom and then uh, pass it or pull it along the bottom with a little shaking movement. So here you can see I put it on completely straight and uh, again inside here I have that little hole where I can pass the toothpick through uh, so you cannot pull the bait off it just sits there so well. Cut it right off on both sides and the toothpick can last many baits like that. So fishing with jig heads one of the most important things is to have the bottom contact. So today is blistering cold. We are on uh, just a few days before Christmas and uh, the water temperature here is the, the top water is just a few degrees and we got the heavy water around four degrees at the bottom. So the fish are probably gonna be uh, on the bottom. And what is super cool about fishing with these jig heads is I can feel when it hits the bottom, you can kind of see the line go slack. So a good way to search um, this little edge that I'm going to search here is to actually cast up on relatively shallow water and let the jig bump dunk, 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 down over the, the edge and making sure that I keep that bottom contact. So once the jig hits the bottom, you lift it and I have this one, two uh, movement when I fish jigs like this, this to provoke them uh, to the bite. So when you lift the jig and let it fall, it swims and kicks on the way up and the gravity that will pull down the jig head makes it swim and kick on the way down. So basically it's like a little bait fish that's fleeing or escaping. And uh, that's how simple it is, up and down, up and down. There is a variety of softwares out there and uh, the main thing is with uh, these shads or paddle tails that you create uh, the vibration and the flanking and flashing movement by having a geometrical shape uh, in the rear of the soft doors. You can see here, this one is a typical X-shaped one. And what that does is it, when the weight of the jig head will pull it down through the water, the water resistance together with the soft PVC material will actually create this movement. So that's why it's important that you balance the weight of the jig head um, towards what kind of software, how big the paddle is, how deep are you fishing, etc. Because it is simply a matter of the water resistance that creates uh, this, this action and uh, say, say the gravity uh, of the jig head as it falls down through the water will then create that the jig will swim all the way down. Now this is the first one uh, that I ever designed is the Cannibal Shed, which is actually kind of a swim bait so this kind of tail bridge here actually makes it swim uh, both on the drop and on the retrieve. You don't have to do a lot. It's super, super simple to fish it. As, I, as you can see, the key here is that you kind of form that the tail will actually uh, be so flexible that when you hold it upright, it does just like this. This is a very good sign of a good soft uh, paddle tail. This will actually swim both on the drop and on the retrieve. Then you got this kind of a T-tail, uh, which is more of a finesse lure. It has a very, very thin tail bridge, uh, quite little and, and fine paddle. This sends out super tight vibrations and uh, actually creates a super good uh, swimming action. And again, the tail bridge here is very important on how much of the movement from the paddle tail is actually transferred to the body as vibration or flanking, as we call it. Then we have a little bit of uh, a hybrid here, which is the new scoop, slender scoop shed. So very slender profile. And this scoop kind of tail that gives this incredible rocking action and quite a different movement from the two others. And inside this one, we've incorporated a little grass, glass rattle. So this one actually clicks as you lift the rod. So this is a very interesting lure, especially in uh, murky water and in the colder months where you add that little extra sound. One door that shouldn't be forgotten, or one style that is also very good to fish with jig heads, is curl tails. So this is the cannibal curl tail, as you can see where you've got this big curl tail here that leaves this kind of flashing and flanking action in the water. This can also be super effective, both for perch, pike, and sander. So other than these four types I'm gonna show you here, there's a vast array of different soft lures, each of them designed to provoke uh, and imitate 
a bait fish or a fleeing bait fish. And we got some good head shakes, but it does feel more like a pike, to be honest. But uh, we had a really tough day here uh, trying to find those uh, big perch. So I decided to move around a little bit. And uh, I found that school of bait fish, as you can see. Just drop, drop the jig, let it fall down, lift it a few times, boom. And that's what you get. So, light gear. Uh, even though this is Perch Academy, we didn't tell this pike that he couldn't join. Ah, there we go. <sighs> well, that shows you how effective it is to fish with those uh, shads on the jig heads. Just lift it up from the bottom, let it drop. Boom, you got a bite. So, day is coming to an end. Um, we tried really to find the perch. We didn't really succeed. We had a few good pike. Um, perch Academy was really supposed to end like this. We talked about Texas Carolina rigging. Uh, we talked about fishing a net style of baits on different jig heads, chep heads. And we had a whole episode about drop shot fishing. And uh, this way of fishing with jig heads and shads and soft lures is just super, super effective. Uh, but there's other, also other methods for perch fishing, like spinners, uh, spinner baits, twitch baits. Uh, we're gonna come back with uh, some more episodes of the Perch Academy when we're fishing in the warmer months. Um, there's a few other baits and techniques that we really wanna show you guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching our shows and uh, feel free to give us some comments here in the, in the comments area below. Uh, if there's something in particular you want us to to do more, there might be a Pike Academy, Sander Academy, Trout Academy, who knows. So you guys feel free, comment on what you want to see. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, see you out there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Texas Rig Catapult Cast. Bye bye. bye. Well, you saw that snag right there. I bet you there's gonna be fish on all these trees here. Big ones too. It wasn't a perch, but that's the name of the game.